this is the Great Pyramid, and here is the entrance to the center of the pyramid, secret entrance. We climbed through a narrow tunnel on our knees to reach the center. There's a skeleton in some sort of a sarcophagus, and nothing more there, very bare, very disappointing. The pyramid is extraordinary. The steps were too large for us. Some people were able to climb, but we were unable to. The number of pyramid of tombs, the pyramid of make the jars, please. Let me finish the explanation. That's the structure built around an old Egyptian ship that they discovered, I think, in the 1960s. This leads to the temple beneath the Sphinx. When I first saw the Sphinx in 1959, it was completely buried up to the neck. Today we have a complete temple underneath and the, uh, and the arms reaching out. It's all been exposed since then. You can see where the head, where the body was buried for thousands of years, and I saw it with only the head above. Del Nord had to get me special permission to go down and stand in front of the Sphinx, the actual large Sphinx, for me to do my watercolor there. And, uh, I was well along with the drawing when I was joined by a German photographer who was also had to get special permission. And the two of us were standing under the uh, face of the Sphinx, but we had both received the same warning that the nose was expected uh, to drop off and we should be careful, constantly on the lookout. The scenes along the Nile were spectacular. These are mud houses where people have lived for thousands of years. This is a new construction. 
you can see the contrast between the mud houses and the new scene of the Nile with Cairo in the distance, very modern Cairo. Again, scenes along the Nile. It takes you back to biblical times. These are the mud houses. This is Dendra Temple, I believe some of the columns led for the inspiration to Art Deco. You'll find many more columns later on with Art Deco looking themes. And this is the only known portrait of Cleopatra. That's the pyramid of King Sonosret III, or Caesar Street III. We didn't climb the Bent Pyramid or go into the inside, uh, into the uh, main burial chamber. There really was nothing to see inside, but it was interesting making the climb. Same is true of the uh, Step Pyramid, which is the first. Uh, apparently, the more ancient pharaohs had been built with a large platform over it, not a pyramid. But this pharaoh lived so long that he celebrated uh, every, uh, I think it was every 12 or 16 years, uh, a, uh, a rebirth. He had to run around the whole area of this temple site and another layer was added, uh, which duplicated the earlier kind of memorial to the dead pharaohs until it became a pyramid. <laughs> And the succeeding pyramids, 
were built the same way, except they filled in those steps to make the regular uh, flat shape sides. But this is the original. This is the step pyramid, site of the first architecture. It's considered the birth of architecture underneath the temple. And this is the incredible, incredible edifice leading to the step temple. You can see the Art Deco feeling here. And this is the very first example of architecture in the history of the world. Here are columns inside. These were uh, storerooms. For the priests, the, the priests did live here. This is Bernice Yazbek protecting herself from the sun. walls and columns leading into the temple. These columns are spectacular. You can see how White Deco was influenced by this architecture. That's where the uh, statue of the Pharaoh was. He sat in the booth and looked out. And the wall, the base of the wall indicated It's hard to believe that this is the first example of architecture in the history of the world. Very uh, difficult. Anyway, I'm glad we've covered everything in the car. along the Nile, beautiful palm trees. This is the view from our hotel in Cairo at night. Cairo by night. Overcrowded, very busy.